Looks like my, ah, uh, there we go. So I got a little green light here, which reminds me, happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, and same to you. So, uh, so I do have just a, a couple of quick announcements today. Uh, a first thing to say is that uh, Lent has, as I have experienced it, rushed by. And next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and that's the start of Holy Week. And that's just an amazing thing to me. Um, so as we always do, just so folks know, next Sunday we will begin, we'll be processing, we just process in the sanctuary, but we will start the service, we'll start it right at 10. Um, I'll probably do announcements maybe a little bit beforehand, we'll start kind of at the back of the church and um, with palms and process around for those who want to do that. And so you're welcome to go ahead and find a seat, but, but at 10, as I say, we're going to be back at the church and, and processing. Uh, after that, we do have a bunch of stuff going on for Holy Week. We will include the whole schedule and an insert for next week in the bulletin. I just would want to <laughs> emphasize the, the three big services are Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and, um, and then, of course, Easter Sunday. And one other thing I note is we do have that children's event, which is always a lot of fun. That's on Good Friday, so not this coming Friday, but two Fridays from now, and that's from 10 to 12. So other things to say, not that much. Uh, we will have uh, vestry this week, so if you've got something you want the vestry to be aware of or to think about, um, then let somebody on the vestry know. And, uh, and then just one other small thing. So because Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday are special services, we won't do birthday or anniversary prayers on Palm Sunday or Easter Sunday. So when we do them for today, we're thinking about three weeks, just a little advance notice. So. Anything else to say before we begin? Oh, Joe? We have our sheet out for a sign up for our pasta dinner on the 8th, right over here on this table. Great, thank you. Yeah, so we'll have our April community supper, not on the 1st, since that's the day after Easter, but uh, on the 8th. And if you'd like to uh, go ahead and reserve a spot, you can do that. I should have also mentioned immediately after this service, or probably really starting at 1130, in the community room, we'll continue our, our Lent formation series on the Stations of the Cross. We'll do uh, these two stations here. Other things? Oh, yeah, Joe? Tickets will be on sale next week. Great, thank you. Other things? Our source will begin in just a moment. Please turn in your bright blue St. David songbooks to number 121. 121. <laughs> Be my right hand, 
Our service this morning continues, I think, on the screen, also page 351 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Again, page 351. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Please kneel or sit as you're able for the Decalogue. <coughs> Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you shall not steal. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And turning to page 352, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And if you're following in the book, we now turn to page 356. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And now we're on the contemporary version of the Collect, which is on the insert. And let us pray together. Almighty God. You alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and very changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <clears throat> the first reading is from Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. 
but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 51, 1 through 13, which is also on page 656 of our Red Book of Common Prayer. Please read in response. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner, a sinner from, from my mother's, mother's womb. womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge, Purge me from, from my sin, and, and I, I shall, shall be pure. pure. Wash me, and, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide and your and face from my sins, sins and blot out, out all my iniquities. iniquities. Clean in me, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The second reading is from Hebrews 5 verses 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been dis- designated by God a high priest according to the to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, 
Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. So may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. So this morning's gospel is packed with so much that I had a hard time picking out what to reflect on this morning. We have statements in there, uh, unless a grain of wheat dies, it remains a single seed. Those who hate this life, uh, those who love this life, lose it. On and on. I figured out there could be about five sermons based on this gospel this morning. We're not going to do five, or it could be a two-hour sermon, and I won't do that to you either. <clears throat> what I'd like to do is focus on two statements that were made that Father Harvey just read. The first statement is, Sir, we wish to see the face of Jesus. And the second is, My soul is troubled. So I have a small piece of paper on my cork board hanging over my desk at the house. It's been there forever. Once upon a time, I must have liked it because I cut it out and I stuck it in there. Um, and here's what it says. It says this. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to love. And this is the part that I say every morning before I walk out the door. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Well, that's how I start the day. It doesn't always go that good, but that's how I start. That prayer, in part of which I say every day, helps Capture the meaning of this season of Lent. Seeing the face of Jesus as he walks towards his crucifixion. Lent is that liturgical season of the church's calendar year where we focus on the cost of following Christ. Lent is a time of penance, prayer, preparation for recollection of our baptism in Christ as we prepare for Easter. Observance of Lent is as old as the 4th century. It begins on Ash Wednesday, as we all know, the 40th weekday before Easter, and it ends at midnight on Holy Saturday. Lent is a time of year where we focus our attention on the cross. We focus on that which God the Father has given us, and we are challenged to go forth and do likewise. Lent is about losing our lives by giving them to Christ and gaining eternal life by finding Christ within ourselves. Lent is a lot about loss. It's about losing ourselves in order to find ourselves. Jesus declares that he who loves this life loses it, and he who hates this life will keep it for eternal life. During this Lenten season, 
in our lives, in our struggles, in our cares, in our issues, it's so much about losing. One can say that the season of Lent is a season for losers. Now, a loser by social standards is one who has failed to accomplish any relevant success in society. But God, his standards are different. A loser to him is someone who has not focused on that and has focused on him. This is a season for losers. And Jesus is looking for losers, those who choose him, not society. On a side note, I'd like to tell you a little what I thought about success once upon a time. When I was a teenager, my father and I got into a heated teenage discussion, and it wasn't good. I can remember as clear as I'm talking to you right now, we were down in our basement at the house, and I forgot what the argument was about, but I remembered saying to him, eh, what do you know? You work in a factory. You don't have a college degree. What do you know? When I get out of school, I'm going to make a ton of money. You just wait and see. Well, during that heated argument, I did most of the talking. And my father just listened. Never said a word. Just listened. Looking back, those 50 many years ago, <laughs> 50 plus, 60 plus years ago, I wish I could take those words back. I can't. But it, because I think about my father was in Korea, he was shot twice, he was, um, had a messed up situation there. But he came home and he raised a family with my mother paid all his bills in spite of his lack of education, in spite of all society told us he should be. I now know the true meaning of a loser. And my ideas of what a loser is and what society tells me a loser is are completely different. Many of us may be saying to ourselves, I've already lost so much. What else is there for me to lose? How much more do I have to endure? How much more can I lose? A husband, wife, a son, a daughter, a job, health, and for many of us, peace of mind. We have all suffered some sort of loss. Some have even lost their sense of purpose, direction, or the strength to endure. And now some of us worry about losing more the possibility of losing our children or grandchildren in wars in Europe, in senseless wars in the Middle East. We are all concerned about some sort of losing. But the great deal of the gospel, the good news, is about loss. Throughout scripture, we hear about loss, beginning with Adam and Eve, all the way down to the death of Jesus on the cross. But with loss, everything comes growth. Jesus said that everything must die to grow, and it begins with the cross. During Lent, some people struggle coming to church and losing something. We actually come here to get something. We come to get a blessing, be it financial, relational, spiritual. We come here to get an encouraging word, for some hope for tomorrow and some assurance that everything's going to be okay. Most of us come here to get something. We did not come here to lose. We pray often, Lord, give me financial breakthrough. Lord, give me some peace of mind. Lord, give me a better husband. Give me a better wife. Lord, give me well-behaved children. We come to get, not to lose. And we come to fill our wish list. We've been told that in this world it's best to be a winner. It's best to get all that you can out of this life and do all that you can all that you can to hold on to what you've acquired. No one wants to lose. But being part of Jesus 
is part about losing. It's a matter of letting go. Letting go of ourselves. Letting God in. Letting go of our need for control. Putting our faith in God's hands. Letting go of our egos. Realizing that we are all a spoke on the wheel. Each spoke is needed, but we're not the entire wheel. We're a piece of the wheel. Jesus' words that we must lose our lives create for many of us a conflict of interest. And so this morning, like Jesus, our souls are troubled. We sometimes can't sleep. Some of us are overworked and underpaid. Some of our minds are constantly going. We're constantly walking on eggshells, looking over our shoulders and waiting for the next disaster in our life to occur. We are mentally and physically on heightened alert. Our souls are troubled. And yet for the sake of the gospel, we, the disciples of Christ, must maintain our faith and our assurance. Although we are living in a world of loss, we must press on as we go through life. Many are watching us, seeking to see the face of Jesus. We are to be imitators of Christ. We have a responsibility to everyone we see and meet that they see, when they see us, they see the face of Jesus. We have a responsibility to everyone we meet that when we see them, we see Jesus. As Christian people, the world is looking at us. Society is watching us, seeking to see Jesus through us. They, like the Greeks, want to see Jesus. Every day in our lives, in our sittings, in our risings, at the grocery store, at the bank, at the red light, or on 91, when somebody cuts us off, there are those around us who want to see Jesus. We are the face of Jesus. On the network news, the internet, social media, all week long, we've seen bombs dropping in Ukraine and in Gaza, people dying and politicians lying. But right now, show me the face of Jesus. All week we've seen children treated wrong, fires, snowstorms, murders, but right now, show me the face of Jesus. In many ways, people are coming to us to see Jesus so that they may believe. That's why it's important for us to watch what we say. What we are saying now during these times defines our relationship with Christ. Think about what you say when you're confronted with the questions about the rising price of gas and the rising price of our stake. Think about what we say when people question us about supporting this candidate or that one. As followers of Jesus, we do not support war. We support peace. We pray for those in war. We pray for the opposition and their families but we support peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. So watch what you say. Yes, like Jesus, my soul is troubled during this Lenten season. So what shall I say? Shall I complain, groan, or moan? Shall I fuss and fight? Shall I criticize, scrutinize, and scandalize? What do I say? We wish to see Jesus. God and the church has prepared us for this Lenten season. A few weeks ago, we were asked some questions which remind us of how we are to answer those questions to ourselves, to others, how we see Jesus. Let me remind us what we said. We said, the question was asked, do you believe in God the Father? And we said, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We were asked, do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? 
And we said, we did. We were asked, do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? And we said, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. We were asked, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? And we said, we will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting all evil? And whenever you fall into sin, and repent and return to the Lord. And we said, I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of Christ? We said, I will with God's help. We, asked, we were asked, will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbor as yourself? And we said, I will with God's help. And finally, we were asked, will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? And we said, I will with God's help. These are the words that we spoke. So when we or others say, we are looking to see Jesus, just like the Greeks did this morning. Let us remember what we promised to each other, to ourselves and to God. And then both they and us will find Jesus. And now please stand as you're able, and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you can find on the screen, also page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. From the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Wales, for our bishop, and for all the clergy and people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. From our diocesan cycle of prayer this week, we pray for Grace Church, Great Barrington, Chancellor of our Diocese, Donald Allison, Credo, 
in our covenant relationship with the Roman Catholic Diocese of Springfield and Worcester. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. This week we pray especially for Suriname from our world cycle, where world prior prayer cycle, sorry. For this town of Agawam, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For St. David's and from our parish prayer cycle, for the community supper team, Mary Fleury, Paul Fontaine, and the Freeman family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Scott Seabury, that all will be well, and for all the people on our prayer list, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all who have departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We give thanks for the life of Ruth Litchfield, and loving memory of whom the altar flowers are given. We also give thanks for the ministry of our deacon, Terry Herbalt. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, Lord have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In the communion of blessed David and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, to thee O Lord, Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another. Peace to Kenny. Peace to the Quins. Peace to Karen. Peace to the choir. Peace all the way in the back. Peace to Chris. Peace. And after you have a chance to greet folks to your satisfaction, have a seat while Terry sets the table.
before we turn to the great Thanksgiving, uh, I know we have at least a little bit of birthday action. So the birthdays, the question is through the week after Easter. I think that's something like April 7. And I think that Diane Seaver's got a birthday in there. And also Kenny. And as it happens, my mother. Are there other birthdays in the next couple of weeks? And Carol? Carol for Bricky? Yes. Ah, I got a nod. Carol ducked out. But we're going to pray for her anyway. So, <laughs> so, uh, so let us please join with me in the birthday prayer that uh, may be on the screen, also page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. And let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And how about anniversary prayers for the next couple of weeks? Any anniversaries to pray over? Then we continue with the great Thanksgiving. We're uh, using through Lent a uh, form from the New Zealand prayer book, which should be on the screen. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed. It is our joy and our salvation. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your Son to share our human nature, who, though tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. Through him, therefore, we may triumph over sin and grow in grace. By his death on the cross, he made the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world and freed us from the bondage of sin. You raised him to life triumphant over death. You exalted him in glory. In him you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with the faithful who rest in him, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. sit as you are able. On the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. And let us say together, Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Your death we show forth, your resurrection we proclaim, your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine, which we receive, may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. And again together, blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. <coughs> together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And now please stand as you're able and let us pray together the post-communion prayer on the screen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. In Christ's name, amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please turn to your bright blue St. David song books to number 207. 207. <laughs> Sure. 